Welcome to this online service of word and music from St. Mark's Church on the third Sunday of Lent. In the Gospel we hear of an angry Jesus turning over the tables in the temple. I will reflect on that and there will be prayers uh, which have been written and are read by Chris Dadson. As usual we have our hymn, an anthem, the Kyrie's, a blessing and an organ voluntary. Let us pray the collect for today. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Thanks be to God.
image you see here of the angry Christ is somewhat disturbing. It is by Lino Pontibo, an artist from the Negros Island in the Philippines at the time of the Marcos regime. In the biblical context of our gospel today, the overturning of the tables in the temple. The painting captures the anger of the people whose lives are being manipulated by force outside their control. Clearly, the artist feels that Jesus could express this level of anger, and the words we heard in the reading from John describes an angry person, a whip of cords, pouring out the coins, overturning the tables. It all sets the tone. It's not a meek, please, please take things out of here, please stop. It's take things out, stop making my father's house a marketplace. This depiction of Christ, who is reacting to an unfairness, inequality and corruption, is in direct contrast to the gentle Jesus, meek and mild, the one who tells us to turn the other cheek, to love our enemies. So how can such an outburst possibly be justified in a son of God, the man who is without sin? Well, being a Christian, a follower of Christ, does not mean being a doormat, does not mean being supine. Quite the opposite is sometimes necessary. Failing to act or speak out in the face of injustice, wrongdoing, corruption or exploitation is not a Christian trait. Knowing what is unjust or wrong is the bigger challenge, of course. That knowledge comes from a life of discipleship, of prayer, and is known under the heading, if you like, of Christian ethics. So why did Jesus erupt angrily in the temple that day? His father's house, a house of prayer, was being exploited by a band of merchants and traders. People entering the temple had travelled for miles to Jerusalem for Passover, and they were getting no choice but to purchase their sacrifices at the door for prices they couldn't afford, but they paid them out of compulsion in order to come in holiness and prayer. Exploitation. My father's house is but a den of thieves, said Jesus. He was looking out for the needy, not the greedy. And there are times to stand up and speak out, little or often depending on our lives' context and experience. But as disciples of Christ, there we have the model, an exemplar here in the gospel with Jesus' seemingly uncharacteristic behaviour. The character of Christianity is not necessarily supine. Sometimes one has to stand up and be counted in order to make a difference for the sake of humanity and for God's kingdom here on earth. As the saying goes, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Let us pray. Almighty and all-seeing God, we thank you for this season of Lent, a time to reflect upon our life and to consider our calling, to examine ourselves and to assess the health of our faith. Help us to be honest in this, to see ourselves as we really are with all our weaknesses and transgressions. Help us to face the things we usually prefer to push aside, the unpleasant truths we sweep under the carpet, pretending they are not there. Help us to come to you now, acknowledging our faults, recognising our weaknesses and receiving your forgiveness, which alone can make us whole through the grace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your blessing to be upon our congregation, upon our church, upon our choir and upon our ministry, and for your presence to be seen in what we do and say each day. We pray that your joy and your love will flow freely in and through us, that we might never be seen by those around us as falling short of the teachings of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the blessings of our country and for the freedom which we enjoy. We pray for our Queen and her family and for those who govern in her name. Give them health and strength wisdom and courage, so that they may carry out their many duties in the best interests of all our people. 
that all who have power remember that they are your servants and that your son came to serve rather than to be served. We ask this in his name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose love sets no boundaries and whose strength is in service, grant to the leaders of all nations wisdom, courage and insight at this difficult time. Remembering the people of Syria, Sudan, Egypt, the Yemen, Myanmar and all other countries in the world where there is conflict. Give to all who exercise authority determination to defend the principles of freedom, love and tolerance, strength to protect and safeguard the innocent and clarity of vision to guide the world into the paths of justice and peace. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think that now of those who most need in our own community, the elderly, the housebound, those in care homes, hospitals and hospices, and those undergoing treatment. We pray for the work and devotion of carers whose skill and compassion bring both material and spiritual comfort at times of need, particularly in this time of lockdown. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those known only to ourselves and to you, Lord, who are in need at this time. Let them feel your presence in their lives as we name them in our hearts and commit them to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>